Rudy Rodriguez got Valenzan Day going today. Winner yesterday in the stakes with Trevor McCarthy up. You have Trevor up again today. This horse came uh, first week in Saratoga opening meet. Sort of had a weird step out of the gate and then really just didn't get going that quickly um, and, and didn't really get its opportunity to run. What are you looking for today? Um, you know, we put in some blinkies on, uh, tried to break a little sharp, and uh, hopefully he he can give us a little better effort than the last time. Last time I was kind of disappointed because he really don't show nothing. So hopefully the blinkies wake him up a little bit and put him in the race early. In terms of gate schooling and gate loading, has the horse been a little bit better in the morning of yeah. the gate? Yeah, you know, he and the more, you know, the, the thing is, is different in the morning. In the afternoon, they know they're gonna run. So in the morning, they're usually okay. You know, sometimes they act a little bit, but not as bad as they act in the afternoon. But we keep schooling and try to make them better and hope the hard work pays off. We can't visit the Rudy Rodriguez barn without asking about Bella Sofia. How's the horse doing? Training back in training? Yes, she's definitely, she's, she's training very good. We're gonna bring some this morning. Uh, we're ready to go pretty much pretty soon. Anything you're pointing towards yet? Um, they know the me on the 28. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Jake McEntee, Kenny McPeak's assistant, running the show this weekend while Kenny's away. Uh, Mahoney stakes tomorrow. You have a horse that was privately purchased from South America. Can you tell us about it? Uh, yeah, editorial comment. Um, he was bought per privately. Um, I think he was champion two-year-old in Argentina. Um, he won a grade two last time out. Um, you know, he's very, very impressive down there. And this is his first start for us, but um, fingers crossed he can uh, he can show us what he's what he's been doing down south. How's the horse been working? Yeah, his work's been very good. Um, we're running with blinkers on, um, just as, you know, I think that's, that's, uh, that's, that's the best way for him. Um, but his works have been very good. When you move a horse from the Southern Hemisphere up here, you know, what do you guys do to get the horse acclimated and ready for the track? Uh, I guess it just takes a little while to accommodate. Um, you know, he's been in a work schedule now for quite a, quite a while. Um, but, you know, it's hard to run against straight, you know, straight three-year-olds when you're Southern Hemisphere, I guess. So, um, so we've just taken our time to, to get him to accommodate to the track. And, um, and yeah, that's, it's, just, it's just a time thing, you know. Last question for you, Classic Cause, uh, uh, Classic Causeway. Um, how's the horse been doing after the last race? Yeah, he's training great. Um, trained brilliantly again this morning. Everything, everything seems to be uh, seems to be going well. So yeah, he's 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 training brilliantly. I know you probably won't tell me. You'll ask tell me to ask Kenny. But any chance to see the horse by the end of Saratoga meet? Classic Causeway. Yeah. No, he'll run at um, he'll run at Aqueduct next. Okay. Thank you very much and good luck tomorrow. No worries, thank you. Here in the golf cart with Harry D. Rice, the racing manager for my racehorse here up in Saratoga. Harry, uh, tell me a little about my racehorse and the opportunities it gives people. Yeah, so we're a uh, microshare syndicate, so very small shares that we sell and uh, we sell the experience of, of owning a racehorse. So we buy in for as little as $100, um, sometimes less. Um, and, and it gives you the thrill of, of owning a, a racehorse. So we, we offer paddock lotteries because our, our ownership groups are so large, we can't bring in a thousand people in, in, into, the, into the paddock, but we, we give you that opportunity to, to come out to the races, we'll schedule uh, events where you, you and fellow owners get to experience race days, but you know, our, our paddock lotteries, we get you in there. Um, you know, it, it's a, a real lottery, doesn't matter if you own one share or a hundred shares, you got the same chance of, of being picked to come in. Um, you get to meet the trainer, meet the jockey, we'll take a big group photo. Just, just experiencing the whole day um, is what it's about. Um, and it's great. It's probably the best part of my job are, are race days and people getting to see their horses in person. So tell me a little about your history and your involvement in horse racing because uh, you got from a racing family. Yeah, so my father is a, is a valet. Um, the guys that take care of the jockeys sell the horses before the races and uh, he's been doing it for about 48 years now up here in New York. Um, I was about 11 when he told me that, you know, I was, I was too old to hang around the jocks room throughout the day. So he uh, lined me up to work for Tom Boss, who we always run around his, his barn in the morning. Um, and I, uh, 
I started working for Tommy. It was awesome. Uh, unfortunately, Tommy passed, uh, and I moved over to, to Shook McGahee, where I worked my, my senior year of high school and, and throughout college. Um, I loved it, but when I when I left college, I went over to uh, work for, for Tom Morley. Hello, Dad. He's over there. No, not there. That's Noda. He's down at the corner with the, the guy shooing the horse over there. Yeah. Always there's working. Like, always oh, working. Yeah, yeah. Just, that was his father we just ran into. So uh, there was my dad. He, he was looking for, for Safi Joseph to return some, some girths to him that, that he left in the room. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I worked for for Shug for a bit. It was awesome. Uh, was around some really good horses, Honor Code, uh, Imagining, just to, to name a couple of them. And then I, I, I got the opportunity to go down to New Orleans and work for Tom Morley. Um, I was with him for a year and that was great. Uh, a little bit more responsibility as his foreman and, and it was it was nice to travel around and, and see other tracks around the country. Um, and then it I was there for about a year and I was, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was working TV in the afternoons throughout college just to give me an idea of what I wanted to do. So I, I actually left the racetrack for a little bit and went over to, to ESPN. I was working on Sports Center and a show called Daily Wager. Um, loved every second of it, but you know, when the pandemic hit, I was coming back to the races. I wasn't working uh, too much ESPN just because there were no sports. So I went back to, to the track and I was, I was, working helping out morally because help was low and uh you know i realized i was missing it a little too much um but was happy at espn but just missing the races um so it was like last year around sales time around this time of year i was up here and i, I went around uh the sales ground with a with another ownership group and Maggie and Tom kind of knew that I wanted to, to come back into to racing. They gave my name to my racehorse who was looking for a, a racing manager, and the rest is history. So my racehorse has the racing manager. You take people around the backstretch. You yeah, introduce that, them to horses. That's, that's one of my one of the, the many Talk many to me jobs. a little about what you work with, horses working with the trainers and getting yeah. update reports and yep. stuff like that. So my day-to-day -day is I, uh, I'm responsible for, to basically be the, the liaison between my racehorse as a company and as well as our owners and uh the trainer so i'll i'm out here almost every day I'll, I'll see our horses train get their workout videos find out what we're pointing towards and report that back to not only our team but our but our owners as well um we'll let them know what what we're looking towards um and, and see what we could possibly run in um unfortunately this year we have a little bit of a lower uh, a low stock up in saratoga it's just how it happens. I feel like that, that, that's that's the, one of the the beauties of Saratoga. You can either come in loaded, or you know everything kind of just needs a little bit of time right before you get up here. And unfortunately, this year we were on the needs a little bit of time side. Um, but yeah, so I, I try and record all of our workouts, get all that for our owners because at the end of the day, you know they they might be over on the front side, um, and we try and give them as much of a heads up as possible to come watch their horses work. But they, they just might not miss it. it might, they might miss it. It might be too early. Um, so at least I'm giving them the opportunity to to see their horses work firsthand through through my videos. Last question for you. How do people get involved? Well, you can uh, sign up on MyResource.com. Um, we have about, I believe we have six horses on the site right now. We just bought two the other night at Chasing Tipton, which we hope can be on the site uh, soon as, as well. Um, but you know, it doesn't matter if you're from California or, or New York. Um, we have horses that are on, that run in the East Coast, the, the Midwest, the and, and and the West Coast. We all, we also have two horses that are up in Canada. Unfortunately, they're both sold out. But we we we're in markets all all around the all around the world. Really, I mean, we we've got our Australian division. We have our My Racehorse UK. We have My Racehorse Ireland. Um, there we're we're everywhere and. We're, you know, it's a it's a way to to really get the the experience, and that that's what we think is more important than anything else. You might you might have zero point one percent of a uh, of a racehorse, but it's the same as if you owned a two million dollar horse. You're still winding up in the winter circle. Well, thank you, Harry. We're Harry Rice from My Racehorse. Opportunities for people to get involved in micro shares, uh, get that ownership experience, and a little taste at a lower cost. 
Thanks, Harry. Of course, you got it.